design a superb apprenticeship experience, it is not enough just to assess the student's achievements and to give feedback on its doings. You can get a lot of information from it, but as a mentor, you want to look ahead and seek out possibilities to enhance the experience for future apprentices and tackle any problems you had. A good mentor takes time to meet and discuss the overall execution of the apprenticeship with the apprentice to evaluate the process. This should be done at least once in the end of the apprenticeship, but it is not a bad idea to do a short evaluation sessions throughout the apprenticeship. For example, during weekly meetups, a short time can be dedicated to it. This offers opportunity to improve things already for the current apprentice. Do not take this as a chance to assess the apprentice, but as a chance to evaluate how well were you doing. The final evaluation of the whole process should be done after the assessment of the student at the educational institution or by a certification authority. Then you can get feedback from this side as well. A student might be satisfied with the apprenticeship, but if the school sees a significant shortcomings, you still need to take action. For example, if the apprenticeship did not fulfill all the learning outcomes stated in the syllabus, you still need to include them in your mentoring plan. First step could be to evaluate the contents of the templates filled by the student to get an assessment or a certificate. As a reminder, this may include analysis of the company, a daily diary, and final analysis and a self-reflection report. Ask the student to bring out things that were good and things that should be improved. If you find out problems, try to analyze where did they arise from. Involve the apprentice as much as possible since these are the problems that he or she experienced. First, try to understand where did the problems come from and why. Did it start because something was not done by the apprentice or by the organization? Make a plan with the apprentice how to solve it and try to implement it the next time. This way, the apprentice has a positive feeling and a sense of achievement in the end, even though there were problems. Often the problems can arise from simply a lack of communications. Some information can be left unnoticed or is simply not communicated. Often the information can be misunderstood. Go through it step by step and see where the problem started from. If the problem was about understanding the information, let the student to make a short summary of how did he understand it, what he had to do and how. Then explain how did you mean it. Too high expectations to apprentice is another common source of problems. Sometimes companies expect their apprentices to be brilliant straight out of the box, but getting an apprentice working takes time. Your apprentice can for sure give you some tips on how to improve the future apprenticeships and what skills must be first acquired. Low quality of mentoring is often a problem as well. It can look straightforward to have an apprentice in your team but not everybody has a good mentoring plan. The student can help you to point out strengths and weaknesses of its mentor and the mentoring system in general. Take this seriously. One side of the evaluation are the problems, but don't forget to outline the positive aspects as well. If something is well, it must be appreciated and recorded to do it again the next time. Analyze the positive aspects and find out what made them good. Would you use the same method to improve some troublesome aspects of your apprenticeship. In conclusion, use all the information you have to get a detailed overview of the whole mentoring process. Diary, notes from any meetings you had, and feedback from the educational institutions are good starting points to keep in mind. Make sure you involve both the apprentice and mentor to the evaluation. No mentoring program starts out perfect, but with time and effort, you'll get there.